Hey guys, Mr. Klein here with our last lesson of the chapter on the age of exploration. Uh, in this chapter, what we're going to talk about is the explorers, Christopher Columbus, uh, John Cabot, um, Ferdinand Magellan, all these guys, of how they explored the new world and led into the age of colonization in the modern world, which we started talking about the beginnings of the modern world with the Treaty of Westphalia at the end of the last lesson. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, the new world, the Western Hemisphere, Northern and North America, South America, according to popular history, we assume that Christopher Columbus was the first European to discover it. But, however, Europeans knew about the Western Hemisphere since the 1000s uh, because the Vikings uh, traveled across the Atlantic and settled there, and they settled and created colonies in Iceland, Greenland, and even Canada, northern Canada, the, co uh, the province of Newfoundland, under the leadership of a Viking explorer by the name of Leif Erikson. Uh, Leif Erikson as you can see in this stylized painting here, sailed with his Vikings in their longships, and they established colonies throughout Northern Europe, uh, Greenland, Iceland, and even in Canada, where they built a settlement much like this in Newfoundland right here. And this is a replica of a Viking house. No real trees there of any substance, so they had to build them out on the land. Uh, these colonies lasted for a couple hundred years during the medieval warm period, uh, and when it finally cooled off, uh, the colonies were found to be uh, not quite uh, economic anymore, and so the Vikings left. And as a result, Europeans stayed away from the New World for another 400-something years. The Europeans looked to the Atlantic Ocean again for exploration in the 1400s with new inventions that allowed them to sail across the Atlantic. Because before then, uh, Europeans who ever sailed outside of... Uh, Europe, they stayed real close to the shoreline because they didn't know what was going to happen. Because, yes, they actually believed that the world was flat and you'd sail off the edge. But the compass, in addition to traditional navigational aids like the stars, helped them find direction. And also more advanced sailing ships allowed them to sail in deeper water and actually sail against the wind, uh, such as the Caravel, which was this ship type of ship right here. The Caravel... Uh, allowed ships to sail in deeper water and allowed them to sail against the wind, allowing them to travel away from Europe and back because the prevailing winds allowed them to sail out toward the Western Hemisphere but wouldn't let them sail out before until these sails from the caravel allowed them to sail with the wind pushing against them. Uh, which was really important. The main reason for this exploration was to find new trade routes to Asia, and in particular India and the spice route. The uh, Silk Road brought spices and stuff over to Europe from Asia, and uh, this allowed people to make money off of it. And the Spanish and Portuguese and everyone else in Europe was looking for a route to Asia so they could cut the middleman out and they could get uh, the spices that they wanted directly. But also the desire, especially at the Catholics, was to spread Christianity and convert all those heathens who weren't worshiping Jesus uh, to the Catholic faith. So let's talk about these explorations. Uh, the first explorers were not Spanish. In fact, they weren't even uh, Italian in the terms of Christopher Columbus. They're actually Portuguese, Portugal, that little country sitting next to Spain. The leadership of these explorations was under a prince, Prince Henry the Navigator. Uh, he was the third son of King John, the king of Portugal. Here's a realistic painting of him right here. Prince Henry the Navigator spent a lot of his wealth developing a college for ship captains, uh, learning uh, how to sail, how to design and build ships, how to navigate using the stars, and how to use land and landmarks to get ships over to the Indies, to India, and back. He spent his own money to fund several voyages, including a famous one by Vasco da Gama. That's this guy right here. Uh, Vasco da Gama went around Africa and arrived in India in 1497, just five years after Columbus sailed to the New World. Uh, Vasco da Gama sailed around Africa, uh, sailed around South Africa, stayed close to the coast, then cut across to Goa and Cal Calicut, which is where he landed here, creating a, a trade outpost for the Portuguese there. Of course, the most famous of all these early explorers was not Spanish, but rather Italian. Christopher Columbus. 
Christopher Columbus sailed for the Spanish in search of a route to India in 1492, the same year the Moors were kicked out after the Treaty of Granada, but instead discovered the Americas in 1492. His trips resulted in the Spanish creating a huge empire in South America, which they held for nearly 300 years. This is probably the most famous painting of Christopher Columbus, even though we're not even sure that was actually Christopher Columbus. Uh, this map right here shows his voyages. The first voyage is in blue. He went to Lisbon, then sailed out, uh, landed somewhere near Santo Domingo, went to Cuba, found the Bahamas, and sailed straight back to the Canary Islands back. He sailed on several more voyages, which allowed Columbus to find more land, claim it in the name of Spain, convert some uh, people to Christianity, and then come back to help establish the empire. The Spanish uh, weren't done exploring. In fact, they figured out that the world wasn't flat, but in fact it was round, so they had grand ideas of actually sailing around the world. And the first explorer to circumnavigate or go on uh, the voyage or go around the earth was led by a man by the name of Ferdinand Magellan. Ferdinand Magellan sailed with a fleet of five ships in 1518, and they returned to uh, Spain with just one ship in 1522. Magellan and uh, his crew, this is Ferdinand Magellan, Ferdinand Magellan right here, traveled around the world. He died in 1521 here in the Philippines after fighting with natives, and the surviving ships traveled around, went through the Strait of Magellan, down here, uh, coast of South America, and arrived in Spain in 1522. Uh, Magellan was killed, like I said, in the Philippines, but this proved that the world was round and proved that you could go around the New World and get to India. Spain was content with their empire in South America because they found gold and a whole lot of it, which made them the richest kingdom in the world. But the Portuguese were still busy sailing and creating outposts like they did in India. They created outposts across Africa. Like I said, more of them India, China, and they were even the first Europeans to visit and live in Japan, uh, creating a settlement and a trading post and bringing Jesuits, if you remember these guys from the last lesson, missionaries bringing Christianity to Japan. And this is a Japanese painting of Portuguese ships landing in Japan. So... Uh, that was the Portuguese and the Spanish, and they were the first ones uh, to really sail and settle the New World. But f they weren't the only ones going and finding the New World. The Portuguese and Spanish, like I said, were content to looking south to Africa and Asia and South America for trade. But the English and the French, the Northern Europeans, wanted to look north uh, for what they heard was called the Northwest Passage, or it was a route around North America to Asia. They figured, well, if uh, Magellan saw the south way, maybe we could go the northerly passage and bypass everybody and get to India faster. The Italians, much like with Christopher Columbus helping out the Spanish, helped out the English and French at first uh, because they were sailors who were used to sailing all through the Mediterranean and into India, uh, bypassing the Silk Road for themselves, leading to the Italian cities with the Renaissance, with Genoa and Venice like that. Uh, John Cabot... Uh, who's this guy right here, uh, that's his English name, uh, his real Italian name was Giovanni Caboto, uh, discovered and sailed around northern uh, America and Canada for the English, and the French explorer Giovanni de Verrazzano explored the eastern coast and the Atlantic coast of the United States and mapped it out. Uh, and here's a picture of Giovanni de Verrazzano. Now, this explorations by the French uh, and English got the Spanish upset because here's the thing. The Spanish were rich with gold and they were at war with an 80 year long war with the Netherlands, the Dutch. They didn't approve of the English exploring land, which according to the Pope, the entire world was actually divided. Despite all of these explorations, you see Magellan, Columbus, uh, John Cabot, uh, Verrazano went down here. They saw that the English and uh, French were going on their turf. There was what they called the Treaty of Tordesillas, which was in 1494, two years after Columbus sailed, that the Pope got together and wrote a document that said that everything on this side of the Purple Line belonged to Spain, everything in the world on this side belonged to Portugal. And after Magellan sailed around the world, and we realized that the world was round, there was a treaty of Saragossa that said that everything between this green line and the purple line belonged to Portugal, everything else belonged to the Spanish. 
Now, naturally, the French and especially the English weren't going to have any of that. Uh, this led to a series of naval battles uh, for control of the oceans between the Spanish and English, what we call privateers. These privateers were actually pirates, and they fought with permission of a government, in particular the English crown. And as the Protestant Reformation hit, and as England turned to Protestantism, uh, led into religious warfare between the Spanish and the English, this led to a really serious war with threats of invasions and things like that. And the most important naval battle between the two countries was when the Spanish sent their armada, the Spanish Armada, which was a fleet of ships to invade England in 1588. Uh, England was under real threat of invasion. This huge fleet sailed to England, and uh, the Royal Navy met them and fought a series of battles led by a captain who was a privateer. His name was Sir Francis Drake. Uh, the Spanish hated him, had a huge uh, price on his head to be captured because he sank so many Spanish ships carrying gold and was a direct threat to Spain's riches. And here's Sir Francis Drake right here. He led the Spanish uh, to defeat at the hands of the Royal Navy, uh, and they decisively defeated the Spanish, and this really opened the door and ensured that the English could establish colonies in North America, which led to us in the United States. So at the end of the exploration, we started to get a handle of what the world actually looked like. This map was made in 1570. As you can see, uh, most of what we know about the world, it looks fairly accurate where Spanish, where the explorers sailed. See Africa, South America doesn't quite look real, but this part of the United States looks pretty realistic. Europe. Uh, this Africa, Madagascar, Saudi Arabia, India, and things like that look pretty realistic. This was what we call uh, Terra Australis or in Terra Incognita, which they weren't quite sure. These pieces of, this is right here, actually New Zealand, this little bit of land, and actually this was Australia also. So the modern world really began to take shape with these explorers. So to sum up the lesson, the Europeans actually knew about North America for over a thousand years, uh, a thousand years ago with Leif Erikson establishing colonies in Canada. It wasn't until the 1400s, until the invention of the caravel, or the ship that could sail against the wind, allowed explorers to explore. They were looking for trade routes in order to trade directly with uh, Asia. Henry the Navigator established a school in Portugal, leading the people like Vasco da Gama, finding a direct route around Africa to India, opening up the spiced route. Of course, one of the most famous explorers was Christopher Columbus, who went four times to the New World in search of India, but instead found North and South America establishing a huge empire for Spain that lasted 300 years. Ferdinand Magellan led a fleet of five ships around the world. He was killed in 1521 in the Philippine Islands, and he had a surviving ship make its way back to Spain. While Spain was doing this, Portugal continued to invest in the East, creating small little colonies across Africa, India, China, and yes, even Japan. Uh, these riches really got the attention of the French and the English, uh, who hired Italians to explore for them. John Cabot, or Giovanni Caboto, uh, explored the United States and Canada for the British, while Giovanni de Verrazzano explored for the French. Uh, this gave us an idea of the world which we started seeing now, but this put the English on track with war with the Spanish over the world, which the Pope had carved in half between the Spanish on this side and the Portuguese on this side. Spain assembled an armada of ships or a huge navy in 1588 to fight against the English, but under the leadership of Sir Francis Drake, the English defeated the Spanish armada, securing freedom for the English who proceeded to settle uh, the New World in North America and later on establishing in the United States where we are. So there you go. That's the lesson and that's the chapter. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know and thanks for watching.